In this video, we're going to see how to create a class in C++. So first off, let's get the general things that we need for any C++ program out of the way. So first, we'll include IO stream so that we can have some output. And so that we don't have to keep using the scope resolution operator, we'll say using namespace standard. And again, you don't always want to do this. We're just doing it in this case just so that the syntax is a little more clear and easy to understand. And keep in mind, you should never add that line to a header file. And next, we need a main method. And that's going to return zero. What we're going to do is we want to create a class. And this will just be a really simple class. The idea is just so you can see what the syntax is to create one. We'll actually talk about some of the things that go into designing a class later. So I'm going to say class, my class. And then I'm going to end it with a close brace and a semicolon. Don't forget the semicolon. So I'm going to have a private section, which will have some members in it. We'll have a string for the name, and we'll have an int for the num. Then we'll have a public section, and the public section will contain a constructor. The constructor has the same name as the class, no return value. And I'm going to pass in, this is a constant string reference. We'll talk more about references later. But this just makes sure that I don't do anything with the string in in the actual method. I'll say x, and x is 0. So you'll notice that, there, that C++ does allow you to have default values in your constructor. Although I don't want x to be equal to x. That would be a problem. And in fact, there's even syntax that'll let us do initialization of member variables, even simpler than this. But for now, we'll just say name is equal to n and num is equal to x. And then I'm going to declare some methods, but I don't want them to be in a comment. We'll have a method print that returns void, meaning it doesn't return anything. And then we'll have another thing called change that'll take a string and an int parameter. You'll notice these are just declarations. We haven't actually defined them yet. But let's go ahead and compile our code just to be sure that it's correct so far. So we'll compile using G++. We'll use the C++ 17 standard. However, C++ 11 would also be sufficient, or 14. And we'll use the same wall and pedantic flags that we used before. So I don't have that installed, so I will need to install it. OK, so now it's done installing. Let's compile. And it looks like we do have some errors. Looks like we forgot to include string here. And that didn't make a difference. So let me put the reference at the end, see if that clears things up. Yep, I like that a lot better. I can run it, but of course it's not going to do anything. So now we need to declare these methods. And you'll notice that now I'm outside the class. So I'm going to write the print method is going to display the name and num. And so I'll say void print. And I'll print the name. And I'll do the same thing for the number. So let me compile this. And you'll see we get name and num was not declared in this scope. And it gave me some options. Did you mean? And no, I didn't mean either of those. I meant name and num because there's name and num. But from the compiler standpoint, I'm just declaring a method called print, and I'm using these variables. Well, it doesn't know that this is supposed to be this print function. So to tell this that this is the print function from the my class class, I need to use the scope resolution operator, which is these two colons, and this says my class. So this statement together says this is the print function of my class. 
And that allows the compiler to say, hey, this is a member function of my class. So I name and num are members of my class. And now when I compile this, it will work. So let's go ahead and do the next method. And that's a mutator method. And I will leave debates as to whether your classes should be immutable or not for later. For now, we're just going to demonstrate how to write a mutator method. And again, it's a my class method. So we say my class, scope resolution operator, change. And then this is going to pass a const string reference and an integer x. And we'll say name is equal to n, num is equal to x. I can also write a non-member method, call this times two, and it will simply return two times the parameter. So again, notice the difference. This is a class method, and I use the scope resolution operator with a class name on it. And this is not a class member, and so it's just a regular function, but I can't use any class members inside. So notice here that even though name and number are private, you can see that here, I can still access them in this class. But if I tried to access them in this function, then I would get an error because they're, this function is not a member of the class. So now let's exercise our class we've created. We'll create one object and we'll say that this is Bob Smith. We'll create another my class variable c2 and this will be alice jones and then we'll say c1 print we'll say c2 print and then i'll print a new line here and let's just make sure that so far we're good so no declaration matches my class change const string int okay so there we go i think that should be sufficient so i'll compile Still not there. Okay, so let's do this. So now I've took the declaration I used in actually writing the function, copy that into the declaration in the class, and that should like it. Yeah. And if I run this, you can see that it prints out Bob Jones, Bob Smith and Alice Jones. I don't really like this, so let's do let's just put some spaces here, and this will print everything on one line. I think that'll be a little neater. Yeah, so. So in my main method, I print both of these methods. Let's also print times to five. And actually, let's print two in lines here to get an extra. So again, just as a reminder with C out, this is called the stream injection operator. You're basically saying print this and also print this. And in each piece, you use the string injection operator to say essentially and also print this. That'll put everything into this particular stream, which is the console output. And at the end, I have two inline characters as well. I could also do double quote slash it if I wanted to. So now let's change C2 let's actually use a function. So let's say times two with four here. And now let's print C2 again. And it looks like this should be capital. Okay, and so you'll notice we've updated the second object to where there's a new name and there's a new number. So this is a real quick example to creating classes with C++, and we'll do a lot more advanced examples later in the semester.